if you've just come out of a long-term relationship and are considering entering the world of online dating, this movie will make you think twice. Inspired by true events, whatever that means, this is Burned by Love. I'm Jay Harang and I've wasted hours of my life watching terrible films. You should subscribe. So we start with this guy who's bringing this woman back to his house. Surprise! Ashley, what are you doing home? I'm throwing my husband a birthday party. (laughs) Oh dear, that's backfired, hasn't it? Yep. So Roger has moved out. A year later, main character Ashley is single and focusing on her career. She's an artist, apparently, but more on that later. She tells her friend Tess that she's had a call from Jacqueline James, the restaurateur, who's interested in one of her murals. Tess is like, I can't believe it's been a year since you and Roger split. I think you should start dating again. I'm on this new dating app, and it's brilliant. Ashley's like, no thanks. You may have already signed up. What? Tess is like, yeah, I took some of your photos and used them to make you a profile. And look, you've already got loads of matches. That That night, Ashley decides to have a look at her matches and see if there's anything she likes. Oh, hello, Marco. She likes Marco's profile and he's liked hers too. So they're a match. He messages her instantly saying, I know we just met, but can I tell you a secret? Ashley replies, Secrets can be fun, sometimes. And he's like, yeah, I've been staring at your profile for a while now, working up the courage to say hello. The next day, Ashley is at Jacqueline Jones' restaurant, and she says she'd like one of Ashley's mixed media pieces on this wall. That is, if she can get it done by the time she opens on the first of the month. Yes, I can do it. Wonderful. This is Grant, by the way. He'll be doing some electrical work in the restaurant. He looks pretty excited to be working with Ashley. We don't actually see Grant knocking one out in the toilets afterwards, but it's certainly implied. (laughs) What's so funny about that? No idea, but never mind. Grant asks what all this was about, and she's like, oh, my friend signed me up for online dating. It's never going to work out because romance is my curse. I have a feeling that things are going to turn out for you soon. That night, Ashley is having a video chat with Marco. She tells him she finds all this being in a relationship with someone she's never met stuff a bit weird. (laughs) It is. (laughs) So he tells her to imagine they're at a restaurant. I just closed my eyes. Ashley's had such a fun time pretending to be... (laughs) Ashley's had such a fun time pretending to be on a date with Marco and chatting to him, she falls asleep on the sofa. When she wakes up in the morning, she's all excited about the prospect of a life with Marco. Although we don't see Ashley rubbing one out under the blanket, it's certainly implied. At work, she's on the phone to Tess, telling her all about how well things are going with Marco. Then Roger turns up. He's like, right, you stole this job from me. I didn't know you'd be my competition. We do very different work. I'm not letting you steal any more gigs from me. I'm warning you. It's a letter from my lawyer demanding you to stop using our company's name. Ashley's like, but you agreed to this. And he's like, yeah, well, I changed my mind. When she gets home, she sees a gift on the porch. She opens it and it's a horrible bag from Marco. That doesn't look good. Marco's like, good, now you have a bag, I can fly you out to see me. And she's like, yeah, definitely. Ashley lives in Rockport, Massachusetts, and Marco is in the Bahamas. My secretary will book you a first-class fare. Let me spoil you. Okay. Marco gets a work call and has to go, but later he calls her in the middle of the night. It's really late here, sorry. Massachusetts and the Bahamas are actually in the same time zone. Scriptwriters clearly don't know this, but it's fair enough, I suppose, as that sort of information is reserved for those with access to Google. <laughs> I was robbed tonight. It looks like I'll have to delay our vacation. I mean, is there anything I can do? $8,000. Do you think you can get it back to me by, like, next week? Okay, but only only because I want to see you so badly. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you for, for trusting me for being a true romantic. But oh dear, it looks as if Marco isn't who he says he is. He has a professional streaming setup and has pictures of all his marks on the wall. He even reads this trashy romance novel so he can find out what women want and then give it to them. All right. (laughs) I'm not sure how good at this he is, though. Watch how obvious it is that he's checking this woman's name during the call. There she is. Clarissa. The next morning, Ashley is wearing a rubbish hat and is sat on her porch waiting for the car to come and get her. But it hasn't arrived, so she calls Marco. Sorry, the number you have reached is not in service. (laughs) 
Later, when Tess comes over, she explains to her how she was scammed. Even the bag he sent was fake. <laughs> Ashley called the police, but they didn't care. Good. So she and Tess get the laptop out and start searching the dating site. They see he has a few profiles on there under different names. He's also on Seek and Date and Lovelife.com, both very popular dating apps in the Lifetime Cinematic Universe. Ashley and Tess decide that he shouldn't be allowed to get away with this, so they make a website about him and share it. At an unspecified time later, Marco was on a video call with one of his potential victims. Beautiful Dorothy, how are you? Yeah, not much sympathy here. She should really have worked out that this is a bit too good to be true. Yes. There's something I have to ask you. Sure, anything. Um, is this you? Uh, he tries to wriggle out of this, but Ashley and Tess's website is just too damning. Marco notices that the website says to report him to the Rockport, Massachusetts Police Department and remembers that that's where Ashley lives. Bitter Ashley. It's probably understandable for her to be a bit bitter considering what he's done to her, but I suppose were he to be reasonable about this, it would be hard to drag this out for 90 minutes. Yes. The next day, we're back at the restaurant and Ashley is almost finished with her mural. The mural is rubbish and Ashley is stealing a living getting paid for this. I could do better than that. It's not true. Well, if you've been watching my videos for a long time, you'll know that when I've previously tried to prove this, it's massively backfired. But this time, I could definitely do better. Whatever. All she's done is gone to Home Depot and said, can I have some tiles, please, in light and dark purple colours, then glued them to a piece of wood. Anyway, for plot purposes, this is a stunning piece. Grant notices that Ashley doesn't seem happy, so he invites her out for pie. When they leave, we see Marco is waiting outside. Bitter Ashley. He goes into the restaurant, grabs a hammer out of Grant's bag and smashes the shit out of her mural. <laughs> Over at Pop's Diner, Ashley sees who she thinks could be Marco pull up in a car outside, so she can't really focus on her date with Grant. Now Marco's at her house. Bitter, bitter Ashley. He smashes a photo, then goes up to her bedroom, but Ashley has come home with Grant. They go upstairs and they're about to bang, but then Ashley thinks she hears something. Is there something downstairs? It's Marco putting a listening device in her bag. Grant goes down to have a look and sees the windows open. Then Ashley comes down and sees the smashed photo. The next morning, Tess comes over. Ashley tells her what's happened and that nothing was taken. This was personal. You don't think Roger could have done it. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. But Ashley's like, I doubt Roger would do this, but the police are going to question him anyway. Then she gets a text from Grant telling her to come to the restaurant. When she gets there, she finds the remains of her mural. <laughs> You know what? They didn't even check the cash register. I think this was personal. So Ashley's finally put two and two together and worked out that it's Roger. When Jacqueline Jones gets there. All this beautiful work ruined. I needed this ready by Friday. I know. I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I'm a fan, but I cannot simply leave a wall bare. Your services will no longer be needed. She's like, if I go elsewhere now, I may be able to find a better price. Furious, Ashley goes over to Roger's house and Marco is following her. He can hear their conversation too, thanks to the bug he planted in her bag. Ashley accuses Roger of doing all this, but he's like, what are you talking about? Piss off. As she drives off, she sees who she thinks is Marco in his car. Again. Once she's gone, Marco goes and knocks on Roger's door. Who the hell are you now? You are going to tell me everything. Everything about your little marriage with Ashley Morris, okay? Okay. Oh, okay, 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 okay. The next day, Ashley is with Tess and she's finally worked it out. Tess, I have this strange feeling it might be Marco. Correcto mundo. Tess is like, that's ridiculous. Marco is long gone. Ashley still doesn't bother mentioning that she thinks she's seen Marco in the area twice because that would make too much sense. When Ashley leaves... Hey, Tess. <gasps> When Ashley gets to the restaurant, she sees that Grant has done what he can to fix her mural. He assures her that she has not been fired, and Jacqueline just says stuff like that. Oh, I see. Then Ashley gets a phone call. Roger was attacked last night. What? It was the hospital. So she goes round to Roger's house. The attack has given Roger a new perspective on life, and he apologises for being such a knob about the business stuff. So did you see who did this? Sure, I saw who did this. He sure knew you. He said to tell you Marco's coming. Marco has Tess tied up next to his bed in his motel room. He wants his livelihood back, so he tries to get Tess to record a video saying that Ashley is a ruthless liar. Ashley has come to Tess's house and she's not there. Then she gets a call from her phone. Ashley. Where's Tess? 
Did you think you could attack me and I wouldn't defend myself? What do you want, Marco? I want my reputation back. Ashley's like, well, it's too late for that. It's already done. Then he sends her a picture of Tess tied up. She's like, okay, here's the deal. We'll go on a date in public for everyone to see. The restaurant has a grand opening tomorrow night. Let's go there. And he agrees. Ashley goes to the restaurant to see Grant and has somehow worked out that Marco has been hearing everything she's been saying. So she puts some music on and tells Grant. He's been listening to us. I have a plan. But first we need to take out the trash. She goes outside and puts her bag in the trash. Jacqueline turns up and she's really impressed with the changes Ashley's made to the mural. She also tells Ashley that the grand opening has sadly had to be postponed. Ashley's like, look, I've got an idea of how you can fill this place tomorrow night if you're open to a private one-time sitting. And she's like, yeah, all right, go for it. Then Ashley and Grant stage a conversation that leads Marcus to believe that she plans to go on the date with him as agreed. I've made up my mind, okay? I'm doing this with or without you. I'm done. Goodbye. Grant. Poor, bitter Ashley. So now it's date night and Ashley is dressed for the occasion. Where's Tess? She's okay. For now, the rest is up to you. Pretend like you're having fun. While that's going on, Grant has managed to get into Marco's motel room and save Tess. Back at the restaurant. I know everything about you. You don't even know my first name. But I do know your first name, Nicholas. Nicholas Bojek. Shut up. He's like, shut up with all this or I'll kill you. Are you going to kill us all? That's right, Ashley has managed to get a load of Marco's victims to gather at the restaurant and pretend to be customers. Very impressive indeed. Luckily, despite having had video calls with all of them, Marco failed to recognize a single one of them all evening. Right. Ashley's like, we've got you, Marco. You'll never be able to show your face online again. And he's like, yeah, well, what about Tess? And she's like, we've already saved her. Then Grant runs in with the police. <coughs> Back the hell up. Marco drags Ashley into the kitchen. He plans to escape through the air vents. So he ties her to a table with this apron. The police are trying to get into the kitchen. And for some reason, they're allowing Grant, an electrician, to take the lead. Ashley manages to untie the apron and grab the romance novel from Marco's jacket. It turns out it was a birthday gift to him from either an ex or his mum. It's unclear. All you need to know is Marco is very attached to this book. Realizing this, Ashley grabs a match and lights a fire in this frying pan. Ashley, what are you doing? Stay right there. Take that to him now. She's very special. Don't. Don't. don't Ashley. Don't move. So while Marco is trying to rescue the book, Grant is still trying to get through the door. It seems the police have just given up and decided to leave him to it. Finally, he gets through. He's in here! Get his arm. I got him. What shit police officers. Anyway, Marco is arrested. At an unspecified time later, Ashley is in bed with Grant reading a trashy romance novel. <laughs> You're not still reading that, are you? Oh yeah, I'm just getting to the juicy part. Grant's found a review online of her mural. It was the perfect backdrop to a memorable evening of fine dining. What? Who would post a review like that? That's absurd. Anyway, then they kiss and that's the end of the film. So until next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and check out this other video. Thank you.